What up, guys? CP the Tool Addict. Woo! How's it going? <laughs> Neighbors out there. Got a little bit of a video today. I want to talk about... Not sure if I really want to call this a rant. Kind of? Maybe? I don't know. But anyways, I appreciate you guys. I know why uh, I always enjoy making a video and seeing your comments every week. Um... I know I've talked to a few people that I haven't talked to before. And uh, always nice to hear from people who have been watching me for a long time and then they comment and say something, you know. Um, also, I really appreciate the feedback. Some of you have made some suggestions and I, uh, I really believe, I really, 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 really appreciate that. <clears throat> Anything that you guys want to see or any suggestions that you have are always totally on the table and that is an awesome deal. Definitely wouldn't have this channel doesn't go anywhere without you guys. So if you enjoy watching the content, it's definitely part of you or definitely something that I want you to take upon yourself to be a part of the channel. So, anyways, I've got a couple of ratchets here we're gonna talk about. Um I don't want to really make it sound like it's a rant, but it's definitely something that's I've got some boggled my, my mind and, and I guess the title of the video today is uh gimmicky tools again. I've done I've talked about these before. Um, not these specifically, but I, I guess I've kind of brushed on them in some other videos, but uh, I'm not really always the best at following up on something when I've done it because I feel like since I've done it, it's over with, but I realize that not everybody sees it. So without further ado, we're going to talk about this little fella. Lately, I've noticed that there's been a huge, huge, um, or not a huge, but there's been a slight interest in these ratchets i'm gonna spin you around we're gonna look at these and talk about them while i'm looking at them all right so let's get right into this so this is a swivel head locking I, it's really hard i don't remember exactly what they called this there was actually several different designs of this and proto came out with this design and you can see that this was a patent pending there's the part number and these ratchets are getting kind of rare i've noticed now um in fact this one is probably Super rare. This is Greater Nationals. Mac Tools used to sponsor a lot of drag racing teams. A lot of drag racing. Uh, U.S. Nationals. Really fun stuff that I like. Me, personally, I've never been. In fact, you can tell how old this is. Some some of you guys that have been around a while, those got straight screws in them. Um, this, one's got, this one's a little bit newer. It has that. And, and I obviously don't use these a lot. These are more collector. And I noticed that Snap-on came out with their quarter-inch version. Now, I'm pretty sure the reason why they're coming out is probably because the patent is going out on these. And I got to tell you, it's kind of hilarious to me because if you look at Mac Tools and Proto, they pretty much all have gotten rid of selling these things because, quite frankly, they're useless. Um, I mean, other than they're fine for a, another ratchet, but, I mean, they're bulky right here. Now, the Snap-on has a little click deal that kind of makes it a little bit thinner right there. But the long and the short of it is, is that I've never used these in 20 years or ever had a situation in 20 years that I've had these ratchets that I said, that ratchet saved my bacon. And quite simply, why is that? Because there's so many other ratchets. When ratcheting wrenches came out, they pretty much took the place of this. I see guys talking about doing uh, bolts and stuff like this and manifolds and whatnot. And uh, <laughs> I can get, uh, I can get ratchet ratcheting wrenches in there in fact if you want to get right down to brass tacks um for most part uh if i really gotta get into a tight space now obviously i can't change the angle of this but this is a flex head and it's very thin so i can manipulate it into the point to where it even comes straight out and i can spin it like so it uh to me you you're really reaching deep really reaching deep and i i gotta say like this is this is the epitome and we're going to talk about one other tool too that's uh i want to get your guys' opinion and I, and actually i want to get your guys' opinion on this too um you know the ratchet itself is it this one is i like this design if i was going to have to have one because it literally locks in every position um i mean it, you get more locking positions where i think the, the snap-on is only like a four position and this one basically locks in every position imaginable i mean even if you had to if you really had to get it in there like that which is funky and weird but uh and the quarter inch one I, I just never have gotten into a spot where i've said you know what these things really really need 
they need to happen and uh they're be and i've seen snap on putting it out i gotta say i'm a little bit disappointed like this is the best you can come out with innovative wise the snap these ratchets are pretty much collector ratchets only they're an odd ratchet and uh i you know if you guys have if i'm missing out on something i gotta tell you i got i gotta know because because i honestly i've had some pretty hairy situations where i've needed stuff and quite frankly, these ratchets have never been the one thing that I went for a go-to. And uh, they are well-designed. And I'm pretty sure that Proto held the held the patent on these. So, you know, that's kind of my feeling on that. But uh, the part number, if you can find these on eBay or something like that, you know, we'll look up closer. Uh, there's the part number for the quarter inch. You can see these are USA made um quarter inch this looks like it's rusty but it's actually not that's the color of the anvil some kind of i don't know what it is it's i think it was a special coating they put on it but that's definitely not rust on there if that uh makes sense but uh yeah this one's got a little bit of moisture mitigation problems but mac actually used this coating on their anvils um when they were building these so anyways moving right along my next um order of business is once again i'm going to talk about these bad boys and if you don't know what these are um i've actually talked about a video about these these are called vaughn and bushnell and uh, these are actually over 100 years old well these pliers here are probably roughly i don't know 50 60 years old but these are uh these are pretty rare in fact, I don't know if you can even find... They, I don't know if there's a part number. I've been meaning to restore these, kind of. But they are just sweet little pliers. In fact, i got to tell you, for screw extractor pliers, um, these might be hands down the best. And when I'm talking about screw extractor pliers, because I have the Negisaurus, Negisaurus Brute Engineers. Um, and the Brutes are the special edition green handle. If you don't know who Engineer is, they're van pliers. Van, uh, Engineer makes the pliers for van pliers. This is Japan. Um, there's your part number on these. PZ33. These are actually ones I carry with me all day long. Um, believe it or not. Don't get a ton of use out of them because honestly I don't really pull out that many screw extractors. But honestly these are probably my favorite. And that's the Fujias. And that's the part number for them. Once again. A little bit different design of teeth there. A little bit of different interlocking jaws. Definitely a unique design, I should say. I'm trying to get the light in there and everything. It's not cooperating. There we go. Yeah, so let's look at back here at the engineers. See how the engineers are... A little more aggressive of course we've had the snap on i've talked about these all before okay and the snap on the six six one two a e piece the reason why i'm talking about these is because uh nipex is coming out with a twin grip now here i've had a lot of people talk on my live streams and whatnot about them but uh, if you see i have four different kinds now i guess i could do a comparison on these because you know, I guess since I have these, why not spend the extra $40 and make a video on the comparison on them? But uh, quite frankly, I don't see the point because I looked at the uh, I look at the, the Nipexes and the heads on them are practically as wide as these. In any type of situation where I'm getting in to get screws out, usually a smaller screw is going to be like this. This is basically the same width as what the Nipex is. And uh, we're doing innovation after 100 years. Um, I mean, I, I guess if you wanted to get into that market, I don't know. People get, have, there's, Nipex has a following. Once again, it's one of those tools that I just don't understand why people are going crazy and what I'm missing out on, I guess. Because there are so many good screw, screw extractor pliers. The one thing I noticed about, I mean, the, the twin grips have a five position lock on them. From what I've seen, and I haven't really watched any videos out there, so I, you'll have to forgive me um, for being ignorant on the Nipex uh, um, because I haven't seen any videos, or I haven't seen anybody put out any videos that I would actually trust their opinion. Most likely, I mean, the, the biggest thing is, is when you have, I don't trust a lot of YouTube videos anymore. 
because 90% of the people that are doing YouTube videos are sponsored or ambassadors or whatnot. So they're going to say whatever the company wants them to say so they can continue to get free tools. And quite frankly, that doesn't appease to me when I'm looking for something that works. And you can see clearly I've been using the engineer and they work. Um, and that's just, that's just the bottom line. So um, lo, lo and behold, I mean, I've used these and they get the job done. So maybe me being the Nipex, uh, I like Nipexes. Don't get me wrong, you know, obviously I have Nipexes. But uh, the wide draw on the Nipexes, from what I've seen the dim dimensions of them, really don't hold different. Now they do have a little bit of a, I've seen pictures where it's got a little bit of a different side profile or whatnot. But uh, I don't know, guys. <clears throat> Somebody needs to tell me if I'm missing out on something or what I'm not seeing. If you guys want to see me do a comparison between the Nipexes, the Fujias. Obviously, this one's getting a little bit of rust on it. Uh, I have, I, it's, it's humid here in Iowa, and unfortunately, time, this time of the year, no matter what you do, you get a little bit of the humidity and whatnot. Cause you to get a little surface rust, and I'll clean that off, and you'll never know it. But I've been using these, too. These actually are my favorite. You can see the inside cutting on them where I've actually wore them away. But uh, I, I really do like these the best. There is some uh, hindrance about the springs on these. But uh, they fit nicely in the hand. And if you use two hands, I guess that's kind of keep them closed. You can spin it and spin the screw out. But I really think the Defugias are, are pretty much hands down the best in my opinion. Um, I like this profile on these. The nose is nice and narrow. The cutters work well. Fujia builds a fantastic pliers. And if you don't know Fujia, they do Victor. And I got to tell you, Japanese Japanese tools are really taking a front front runner for me. Um, even over USA made tools now because they're just consistency. Quality control is so much better than everybody else's. It seems like we're having, obviously, since the, since the old Rona came around, we're having issues. And uh, I, I can see I can see things dropping off. I've seen toolbox issues. I've seen a lot of problems. Lack, and it's and it's not because it's lack of quality control, but it's lack of lack of work or lack of uh, um, just general laborers, um, people that are that care about their job and whatnot, and people that are overworked. And um, it's just it's rough. Um, but anyways, I'm not here to talk about that. Anyways, that's my uh, that's my uh, video for today. And I really hope you guys chime in on this and talk about this because there are definitely two tools that I find that uh, are being reinvent, trying to reinvent the wheel when the wheel's already been reinvented. And I'm not a big fan of reinventing the wheel. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I don't think I don't find like I mean there's there's multiple uh, tools out there, but why? If you know there's not they didn't I didn't see anything from the Nipexes. I haven't seen anything from the Snap On that really stands out from these. It's just the same tool now, made by a different another company. Anyways, guys, that's the video for you. I hope you enjoy it. Remember, like, comment, share, subscribe. Ring that bell. Remember, keep your hands dirty and your money clean. Thanks for watching.